You are to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. There are battles waging war against our soul. You see, all these things I've been talking to you about are all evidences of a man who is free here. They are all evidences and proofs of a man who has received mental emancipation. You know, slaves have a way of thinking. Free minds also have a way of thinking. When a slave sees a free mind thinking, he thinks he's exhibiting pride. I like the way my younger brother said it. He didn't know I took note of it, but I took note of it. He said, when insecurity meets confidence, they call it pride. I wrote it down in my heart. He didn't know. He just said it carelessly, but I wrote it down in my heart. He said, when insecurity meets confidence, they call it pride. Insecure people call confidence pride. It's a soul. It's a soul problem. Hear this. The best gift I can give you is a kingly mentality. Can we flow in this service together? I said, the best gift I can give you is not money. Somebody came to me and was begging me, sir, nobody to help me. Nobody has ever given me. Nobody has ever done this for me. Nobody has done that. I said, my friend, what do you want? He said, I just came so you can help me with small money so I can help myself out with a few things and all that. I said, you know, if I give you this small money you're looking for now, you will need more money tomorrow. If I give you any amount of money now, okay, now, how much do you need to take care of your life forever? That's the question I asked How much do you think you need? If you have the next 100 years to be on earth, how much do you need? How much do you think you'll be needing? The money I will give you now cannot even take care of you for one month if I have to give you money. Even if you are working, your salary is not almost enough. So what do you think is that thing I can give to you to make you free? It's not money. There is an intangible wealth that once is transferred to you, it does not matter where they put you. It does not matter the prevailing conditions around you. It does not matter what people say about you. It will not change or deter who you really are. What makes the lion the king of the jungle is not in a size. Do you know the lion is not the biggest animal? The elephant is bigger than the lion. Do you know that? There are animals, gorillas, bigger and taller. Giraffe is taller than the lion. What makes the lion who he is? What makes the lion the king of the jungle? It is the kind of image the lion has about itself. Okay, I feel that anointed on me right now. It's the kind of identity the lion has about itself. Once you lose identity, you lose destiny. Once identity is lost, destiny will be a struggle. Living will almost be a a matter of boredom. Living will become an affair of existence. The lion does not control the jungle because it is called lion. It's the identity, the image, the self-concept the lion has about itself. When I went to Africa, I was telling that story to start a church. I met all the Christian bodies in the city. And I told them, we are here to do a meeting that will change the landscape of this city. They all came together. But you know what they were looking for? Money. Pastors, you know what they were telling us to do? Bring money for this. Bring. I said, don't worry. I don't need to give you guys money. All I need is your cooperation. Let's form synergy and do this meeting. I have my team who would run the whole production of the billboards and all that. You don't need all the money, do you? Another time they say we will pro- provide banquet for all the ministers in the city. I said, no problem. We provide a banquet for them. They came, and you need to see these guys struggling for food. I looked at it. I shook my head. This is a man who came to your city with a program that cost him more than 2M. I did the billboards. I did the banners. Did the flyers. I paid for hotels. I brought in over 60 of my workforce. We were all residents in Afibo, sleeping in the hotel. We're eating. We, we, did, we are not owing one dime anywhere. We didn't borrow any money anywhere. We paid everything in advance. I was sleeping in a hotel all through. 
we were there for more than one month to evangelize the whole city shuttling between the one and shuttling the whole then these men come together let us do this program they say we'll provide i provided banquet i saw them struggling i said this is what they have reduced ministry to at the end of the day they were asking for money in millions to do this do that i said but we're already doing it you don't need them just bring your people I said, okay, apart from the money we are spending, I am coming to your city with over 1,000 books. Over 1,000, two different titles I have written. My own personal books. And I'm dashing your people free of charge. I said, do you know what makes me? I'm able to spare such amount of money for the gospel. I collect books. Collect those books of those volumes. And I share it. One it has, is at least a thousand naira, at least just one copy. I share it free of charge to all the participants at the conference. And somebody walks up to me and says, Sir, it takes heart to do this. I say, Yes, my heart, my soul is free from greed. I say, The reasons your ministers couldn't come together for us to execute this is greed. And that's the problem of the evil man. Greed, he collects to himself, he likes to hold to himself. Everything he has is not enough. It's not enough. That's why he keeps living in that realm of not enough. Every time, not enough. He gets 1,000. Nobody will know. He pockets it at the back pocket. Greed. What is in it for me? He never thinks of people. He is a problem of the soul. A few minutes ago, I played you a picture of the ego. And what makes the ego what it is? Why is the ego different from the rest of the birds? It has outstanding characteristics. The eagle does not fly with chickens. It does not hang around the company of vultures. The eagle is a distinct creature. It has a full self-concept of who he is. And it makes him outstanding. See the power of his vision. His ability to see far. His ability to associate rights. See, his, his ego, not pride now. That thing is called self esteem. But let me say this to you you can be an ego by bet if your association is with chickens, you will lose your identity. If your association is not of your kind, you will lose your identity. That's why the best that can happen to you this period is to listen to me and practice everything I'm teaching you. There are battles waging war against your soul because the soul is the seat of your image. And that's why anytime the devil wants to distort your life or interrupt your God's plan for your life, he will go and pinch you in your image. He will go and pinch you in your soul. He will go and lose something, lose some boats and screw inside your mind. There are battles that wage against the soul. And that's where the devil's biggest battle, fiercest battle is waging. Hear this. I'm doing a study related to a trip I'm going to be making very soon. By God's grace, I'm a potential delegate to represent your country in the United Nations. Yes. And I've been studying all kinds of things. All kinds of dangerous materials. This one is the state of Africa. There are other ones I have on PDF, you know, file. I have on the internet, my laptop, even my phone. Hey, do you know why Africa has been where it is for all these years? Do you know Africa's biggest problem is not in geography? Africa's biggest pro- problem is not in demography. Africa's biggest problem is in soul graphic is a mind graphy. Many years after the scramble for Africa, many years after the reign of slavery, slave trade, when the Scottish and all the Western powers came to Africa, partitioned Africa, took our people out of this you know, part of the world, of course, you know the black race in America is actually African. Yes, all those, they are Tyler Perry and they, 
Oprah Winfrey, all the T.D. Jakes, they are pure Africans. They are only, they are, if you know, the real name they are called is African American. We call them Black American, Negroes. But they are actually Africa and Obama is a purely African from Kenya. They are all descents or byproducts of slavery. These men were taken away from our land, taken into, taken away from their motherland into, you know, the hinterparts, hinterlands, the farmlands, you know, of the Western world. Texas in America. And they were settled there for years, stealing the soil and the plantation of the white man. There's something that happened to the African man during slavery that has been a prolonged kind of, you know, it has been a problem so prolonged that it's so difficult to almost read it off from our lives. One of the problems of slavery is not that, it's not just that the African man was physically bastardized. You need to see the torture. I don't know how many of you have this movie called Roots. Go and watch Kunta Kinte, Roots. In those movies, you don't watch good movies. If you watch movies, Aki and Popo, Johnson, do maybe the dirty girl. Yes, that's what some of you watch. Or you watch Emanuela and Mac Angel. Go and get epic historic movies and watch. You won't watch. See movies like Sparta, movies like 300, movies like Troy, The Rise and Fall of Troy. See movies like, uh, you know, what is this one I just mentioned now? Roots. Roots will x ray to you what exactly happened in Africa. Of, of course, Africa's problem has even been internal before the white man came. Do you know it was Africans that made way for the sales of their people? They were the ones that even made way. There's a book, I have about three of them in my house. I'm talking to you. One is titled, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Written by who? By who? Walter Rodney. Yes, you know that one. You see, some of you don't read. How Europe underdeveloped Africa. There is another one written titled How Africa Underdeveloped Africa. That's where you will see the real atrocities Africans did to themselves. They showed their own people for greed. Greed for things like a few calories. Greed for things like a few guns. They had, right from time, the obsession of Africans have been power. They love power so much. So, just seeing the gunpowder alone, their whole blood starts running. They start looking for people. These Scottish guys will come. I will give you one gun. Give me 100 of your people. Just for gun. Just because he wants to own a gun, they will carry black men and say they will cross them across the Atlantic and it's gone for them. They are gone forever. So, these were our four forefathers who were taken away and made to undergo physical torture. They pass through physical abuse. Watch that movie, Kunta Kinte. Watch that movie. Call them Roots. You understand better. You know, coming to America, that movie would have won the best movie of a particular year when it was produced. But it couldn't win. Why? Because Eddie Murphy is a black man. The concept they gave the black race is that you are a race of timid and, you know, weak people. Little wonder a guy like Michael Jackson could not accept himself as being black. You know why he did plastic surgery? Because he felt, with all my talent, all my gifts, and all my skills, the world will not hear me, the world will not patronize me until I identify with the white. So he went to change his color to look like the white man. That's the whole idea behind that surgery stuff he did. Okay, let me take you through a little history. So when these guys were taken into slavery, they were bastardized physically. Made to walk under rain, under sun. They were abused sexually. Some of their daughters who were taken from here were married forcefully. Some of them became like, what do you call it? Layers for these white men. If these white men impregnate them and they give birth to a girl, they will kill the girl. Because they need the guys. In most cases, when they give birth to the ladies, they sell the lady out. 
to another maybe you know place and all that and the circle continued and it kept going on and kept going on most times it got a particular stage where when you serve for a particular period of years you are asked to go into agreement with the slave master to serve on contracts after a while they sign papers and give you certifying that you are now free to be on your own that happened after many years after many years of working most of these men started gaining their own personal freedom now they could own their own plantation employ their own laborers they could work on their own farmland and all of all that and that was how africans started gaining some little kind of freedom as a slave under a slave master you don't have your life they can kill you anytime they can get you for sex anytime they can get you to do anything that you can't do nothing on your own they had this chain they put on their neck that chain signified that they were properties of the slave master let me shock you that the problem of slavery is not just that it happened physical the biggest secret of slavery is that what happened physically degenerated into the mind it became a soul issue so what the white men did to africans during slave era was to initiate a plan to keep the black man mentally enslaved and the way they got that done was to inflict the mind the mind of the black man before i continue i give a little illustration there's a story of an elephant that was bought by a particular man the elephant was just one day old when it was bought and taken to his new home of course when they brought the elephant to the new home the owner tied the legs of the elephant to a mango tree and every morning the elephant would stand up from that mango tree and move, 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 and get to a particular spot and stop. When he stops, he will go back to the tree and sit down. He was doing this every day. Every day, the circle continued until maybe one year. When the elephant had fully grown, the owner of the elephant came back to the elephant and untied the chain from the legs of the elephant and walked away the elephant stood up from the spot where he was kept walked away from that spot and got to the same spot where he usually stops and stopped and he went back to the tree he got up the next morning he did it he kept doing it almost all his life the physical chain that was holding the elephant had been removed but you know the goal of physical chain was to program the mind. So what used to be a conscious state of slavery had moved from the state of consciousness and has become unconscious. Your subconscious mind is 80% you. Your conscious mind is 20%. It happens to me. Most of the times when I'm coming to church, I want to come down to, you know, I've been used to this road, either this road or that road. Yeah, sometimes I'm, I have no business coming to church. Maybe it's press I'm going to or break break. In most cases, as I'm coming to church, I see myself taking that roundabout, that fountain, taking that turn, coming towards one road. It's sometimes when I get towards that last gate, the back gate of the government house, that I remember, oh, where am I going to? I'm supposed to go to Presco. Then I go and reverse my car again and start going back. There was a day I did it twice. That is, I came like this, turned the fountain. I was coming to government house. When I reached the gate, I remember, I'm going to Presco. I turned back. I went the roundabout. Instead of going to Presco, I turned back the same road. And I reached back the same um, government house back gate and I turned out again. I had to be conscious about what I was doing to delete that stuff. You know, because I have been used to this road. It's always from my house to office, house to church, house to office, house to church. So it has become a program running in me. That is the same way Africans were programmed physically they were bastardized but that bastardization finally graduated to reside in the head i can show you more than 24 things that happened in the mind of africans during slavery i don't have all the time one of it is that the slave masters had a way of keeping the africans dependent on them the whole life of the slave became resident and dependent in the hands of the slave master he decides when you die he decides when you eat. He decides what you wear. He decides when you fight. Have you watched Spartacus? 
Mm -hmm. He decides when you fight. He decides when you have your phones. When you do whatever it is you want to do. You no longer have your life to yourself. So the slave grew. Feeling that my whole life is dependent. You see that he revolting in Spartacus. When they tell him your name is Spartacus. Dominus. Tell him, your name is Spartacus. He said my name is not Spartacus. He hated that name. He wanted to be called by the name his father called him. Christos will tell him, my friend, you are Spartacus. You no longer own yourself. From today, you are the property of Domina and Dominus. You do their bidding. The same thing with the guy called Kunta Kinte. Kunta. They will tell him, your name is what? Toby. He said, I'm not Toby. My name is Kunta Kinte. He said, you are Toby. You no longer own yourself. You are now the properties of the men who bought you. Over time, they instilled in the minds of Africans the mentality of dependence. So one of the things you see in the African man is I cannot be on my own. I cannot survive without carrying CVs. Hear this. Unemployment is not the absence of job. Unemployment is a deliberate creation of a systemic is a systemic arrangement. A deliberate systemic arrangement. It's not the, the absence of job. This thing that makes our graduates so dependent on white collar job. That makes us so dependent on foreign things. Look at, at Nigeria for how many years? Africa as a whole. What can we boast of that we produce? We are not called a producer nation. We are called a consumer nation. We consume we even import toothpick. We import pure water. We import geisha. We import tomato. And we have all the natural resources. All these tomatoes. People come here and plug them. Take it abroad. They, wait, they go and crush it. Package it and bring it back. Even down to our shoes. Shoes that we make in Abaya. here. They send it weekly. They go and repackage it. And they bring it back. We buy it in. Even the things we locally produce. They produce some of these shoes you wear in about, But they will go and write it made in Italy. Because one of the things they did to Africans was to derobe them of a sense of identity. They lost identity. They gave them a sense of inferiority. Meaning that anything that comes from Africa is junior or inferior to what comes from the Western world. This was what they did with us. So they gave us a kind of bastardized mindset. They gave us dependency mindset. Then they gave us an inferiority mindset. It gave us a timid mindset, which is why when you see a white man, something in you starts telling you he's better than me. Oh, his hair looks better than me. He has a better complexion. He has a better accent. So, physical bastardization finally entered the mind, the soul. And he resided there. So as Africans were being settled, you know why they were settled? They were not settled because they, they are now free. They were settled because they knew even if we settle this one, the program keeps running. Like my car has some programmings. If I enter my car and I want, okay, it's just like the stereo in my helix. Anytime I enter and I'm playing a particular song and I off the car, the whole system shuts down. Once I put my key and start, it continues from where it stopped. You did nothing to start it from where it stopped. It's the program. Programming. Mental program. Mental programming is worse than demonic oppression. Yeah, yes. That's why anything that succeeds at entering your head and staying there has entered your life. Anything that succeeds as entering your mind and staying there has entered where? Your life. Whether you like it or not. So as these men were settled, they were carrying on that software inside of their head. Time will fail me to get into this history. But you know, this is what I'm going to be talking about in the UN. Global leadership. Africa's experiment. Why has Africa not emerged in leadership? That's what I'm talking about. So everything I'm dealing on is on the experimentation of leadership in Africa. That's why I'm studying like a no. 
Everything is breaking my head. I don't even know where to start from or where, how to connect it. So see the challenge here. We are carrying another kind of program inside us now. The moment the black man is settled, he gives birth. Remember there were a few things that were denied Africans when they were taken away. Things like education. They were denied the right to read. They were denied the right to write. It was not seen as a privilege for the black guy. It was a privilege for the white. Why? Because the white man has always known if you liberate the minds of Africans through education, you have empowered them. Anything you don't know keeps you low. And let me also shock you. The curriculum you're running in your university was not built by Africans. The clothes you wear, including my suit and tie, Father have mercy. I'm still looking for my own kind of attire. For now, let's enjoy the suit and tie. If I don't see suit and tie as an English wear, I see it as a universal wear. So, it's not the suit and tie we wear, they gave us. Our makeup, this makeup you will put is white man's makeup. Your original makeup is chalk and dots. Go and watch Igugu. Ekulu. Igodo. Those African movies. That's your real. Our own makeup is refiner. We, they will draw one thing here. They will draw one here. Have you not watched it? All those Yule Doche and uh, Francis Duru with um, what is his name again? No, so Diobi with Genevieve. <laughs> when they had those traditional Igwe movie with Udo Jacobs. You see, they will draw one here. Draw. One. Those were, that was our makeup, and we used to look fine in it. Then they carry this thing and it's no your make, it's white man's makeup. We copied everything from them. Our dressing, we copied from them. The one I have a problem with is the education. They give us an education they don't practice. Hello? They gave us an education they don't practice. What kind of education did they give us? An education that produces dependence. You see, if the Africa will be useful to us as we advance through the industrial revolution, advance through civilization, is better with because remember when these men came here to take our people away, they had a problem with communication. Even in Nigeria, yeah. when they came here, all these the Ajay crowd at them, they too, they had a problem. It was even like Ajay crowd who knew English a little. Some of these other big guys didn't know anything. So communication was hard. It's okay, let's teach them our language. So then you go to school to read linguistics, English. You know reading it to be free. You are reading it to be dependent on them. The essence for which English was originally taught in Africa was to help them communicate with us. Help us communicate with you so we can take your oil. Help us communicate with you so you can tell us where your goals are hidden. Help us communicate with you so you can tell us where your resources are. So they created a system of education that keeps us locked up just at the second class level, the class level of life. All you can do is know how to speak English. Then all you can do is know how to write. The highest thing African education produces, go and check, well decorated poor people. Well decorated poor people. That's why they gave you suits. So that when you're working in the bank, they make you feel like you have esteem. Well, decor- I'm not saying if you're a banker, here, yeah, you're poor. Sorry, my friend. I don't mean you're poor. Sorry, okay? I don't mean you're poor. I know those of you who work in the bank. Don't worry. Sorry, I'm not saying you're poor. I know you work in the broadcasting firm. And a few of you. Those of you working, sorry, sorry. Prof, all of you in the church, sorry. That, I'm not saying that you are poor. Hello? I'm only trying to show your history. The wealthiest guys in America wear jeans and t-shirt. Watch Mark Zuckerberg. Watch Bill Gates. If you have seen them where they make their money, there's nothing like big office. Ha 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 ha. My name is Mark to the Zook to the Zabek. No? You don't see Bill Gates in that kind of youth. You see them simple, 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 simple. They are field people. When Dr. Gross came here from the U.S., did you hear what he said? 
He said, I'm a farm boy. Did you hear that? The things we commonize here, the things they place emphasis. America doesn't joke with farming. Do you know? If you go to their farms, especially the ones in Texas, those plantations, you would envy farming. You want to farm. Look at Malaysia. When they came here and took palm fronts. Just this palm seed. Malaysia owns the greatest or the highest plantation now of palm produce the world over. We are good at wasting our resources. Africa is a continent loaded with bliss, loaded with prosperity. This is what the Western world saw, and they saw a people saddled with ignorance. And that is why they came here to collect what we have and keep us perpetually ignorant. Because nothing is yours until you know it. Nothing absolutely is yours until you know it. <laughs> Nothing. Recovery starts with discovery. So everything that came after from the black men who now gained a kind of independence, of course, partial independence, partial freedom, even down to the 19th, you know, 1900s and upwards, down to the 1935s, 1940s, racia, racism was still ravaging the whole of North America. Britain was still ravaged by racism. Even when these Negroes had gained some level of acceptance, there were things they were still denied, privileges. The black guy does not go to the same school the white guy goes to. How many of you watch the film, The Great Debaters? Eh. So you know you don't have an analog pastor. I'm too versatile. Amen. Maybe you want the kind of pastor that wear coats and puts apron on it. Then he will put one mic stand or three. Then when I come to the altar to preach, open your Bible to Joel chapter ten. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will go to heaven. Is that what you want? Here we feed you with knowledge. If you don't like knowledge, you can't survive in prison years. We'll feed you with the knowledge of the things going on around your world. When you leave service, you go and look for books in your archives or buy some and dust them. Pastor scattered our head in the service today. Hey, what am I doing? So, in those early 19th, those were the things that made Martin Luther revolted. Martin Luther King Jr. In spite of freedom, why don't we have access to this freedom? Why can't the black guy go for the Congress? Why can't the black guy study to become a pilot? Why can't the black guy in America have equal access to education? Why is there discrimination? Why are the black guys not permitted to sit in trains? When they enter buses, you stand. If you have a seat, you are sitting. Once a white guy enter, you will stand up from that seat. All those things that happened were forming the summary of our dependency mentality. We're forming the summary. They were forming the foundation and the bedrock of the mental bastardization we are living with. And we grew through those things, feeling that we are second class citizens. We need the white man for everything. We dare not sit in the same bus with them. We dare not go to the same school with them. When they came to Nigeria, came to Africa, Ghana, then it was called the Gold Coast. Went to all these, you know, some were partitioned to the English, some were partitioned to the French. And while they were carrying out colonization, even within Africa, yeah, the same process was going on. One happened in slavery, another one happened in our own country. In our own continent, that one is called colonization. The one that took us out of here to their nation is called slavery. The one they came here and they did is called colonization. What were they colonizing us into? Colonizing us to be under them. Bringing us under them. Bringing us under their servitude. Bringing us under their, you know, bondage. So they give us school. They say, this is the limit anyone who goes to that school can attain. 
make sure the guy is not able to start anything of his own make sure he's not able to build any system and how do they do it through your curriculums so all the things they teach you just produces good enough administrators good enough managers it produces just good enough clerks, secretaries, who can write well. I met a man who had worked in the civil service. He said, this is my 35th year. I am, gra- I am leaving civil service this 35th year. He said, nobody in this office writes better than me. He said, if you see my handwriting, he brought out files. I was looking at his office. Cockroaches running up and down. That was before they even moved to Ochoa City. I said, I looked at the man. He said, he's a high chief. I looked at his slippers. I looked at his nails. I looked at the car he comes with. What a rickety Mercedes. I said, is this what 35 years of active service has done to you? Look at what young people in Nigeria are looking for now. They are looking for job security. They want to graduate. Every NYC student here, or NYC guy here, youth copper here. You know your biggest fear now is when I leave NYC, what next? Because you know there are no jobs anywhere. So that same dependency mentality, you carry curriculum with a CV, resume. You are running from one office to the other. They are telling you no job. And tomorrow you are complaining, this our country is bad. Who employed me? Who employed me? I saw employment opportunities. I turned it down. Opportunities to work in the bank, I turned it down. Why? Because something happened to me in my mind. I read about the Thomas Edison's. I read about the Wright brothers. I read biographies. I read about inventions and inventors. I read about politicians. Their biographies in America. They George Washingtons. I read about the 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 even ministers. The A. A. Allens. I read about you know all kinds of historians. I read about the Nelson Mandela. Anyway, thank God for him. That's why the world revered him. I read about the Martin Luther King Jr. I read about the Oprah Winfrey. You know, one time she felt she couldn't do it. She looked at herself and said, I'm a black kid. I am ugly. They told her in school that you don't have a TV voice. You don't have a radio voice. Her first attempt to do whatever, they said, go and sit down. You can't do it. And she lived with it for some years, for some time. Now she owns one of the best or the biggest TV outfit in the world. She's interviewed virtually the best and the greatest presidents and men in the world. A black kid. But it happened in her mind. Obama won the presence of, Nige- of, of America. It happened in his mind. What am I trying to show you? We have been products of mental slavery because of the things that we went through in our history. Colonialism impacted a slavery mentality in us. Now we have gotten independence as a nation. Almost all African nations, if not all, have gotten independence politically, economically, in principle, in theory, in practice. We don't have. Politically, we are still dependent. Do you know why Nigeria cannot be free from corruption? It's not Nigeria alone. There are treaties on paper binding Nigeria's bilateral and international relationships with certain nations. If you go against some of those conditions on those papers, you are going to attract the linking. That means these nations will depend on, will pull out from us and will crash. Power can be handled in Nigeria. Hello? You see this Nepal outage, power outage can be solved in one day. There are powers that are big in this country, what you call political cabals that have gone into some satanic treaties with different governments of the world and they have vowed not to stop until they milk this nation dry. Or don't you know generators are imported into Nigeria? It's somebody's business. So if you shut down power, you have shut down generator. The importation of generator. That guy who imports will not make money. The cut that comes to government will not go to them. Don't you know if you solve power, you have crippled down the only source of revenue we have in this country, oil. Filling stations will shut down. Our refineries cannot be built again. So you see, corruption itself is systemic. Corruption is a systemic affair. It's not something that just comes. It's something that is deliberately created through systems. I call it systems error.
And of course, this is our bane in Africa. This is our bane in Nigeria. All the battles has been against the soul of Africa. The soul. You see, I have about seven things I wanted to show you. I cannot even that to start on. I will do it on Wednesday. I've just been doing introduction on this battle issue. So what I dealt with today is the political, you know, I just tried to touch a few things on political and social issues. But I won't get into this. <laughs> if I start, we'll stay here for the next three hours. I wish I could raise a generation like me or people who are voracious when it comes to these things we are doing. But I want to let you know that even if you're an African and you live in Africa, you will gain freedom this season. Yeah. You will. That freedom is going to happen knowledge-wise and it's going to happen supernaturally. There's a power that will invade you from heaven. You set your mind free. Some people, when they hear millions, millions, billions, billions, in their mind, it's not for me. I'm not in that class. What are you saying? How long will Africa be a consumer nation? We consume everything. We even consume time. We consume everything up to time. Hmm. When I had a, an opportunity to travel out one time, I figured why nations like Russia, you know, were once world power, as a former USSR, what you call the former Soviet Union. I know Russia is a communist nation. What's the difference between a communist and a capitalist state? Who knows? Oh. Okay. That's good. I'm happy they know. Don't worry. I won't ask you to talk. Do this in class. When a lecturer asks us a question, what is the difference between communism and socialism or capitalism? Maybe one person or two put up their hands. The man will say something like, don't worry. I won't ask you to answer. That's when you see. <laughs> and finally, Oga, come and tell us. God has caught you that day. So you see, such nations, I found that when I traveled at one of those times, one of those countries, I found that one of the things that has helped those nations develop is ethics. That's why if you read my book, Nation Shift, you find out what I said, that nations are not built by virtue of their wealth, but by the wealth of their virtues. That was the first line in my introduction. So such nations have respect for time. You dare not go to the office of somebody to go and waste his time because you're wasting his salary. So this is what you do in your bank. Anybody can just come in and <laughs> you just start from your seat. Hey, 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 nah, man. Nah, you go that barrier yesterday. Hey, oh boy, flexing food that barrier. Oh boy, you watch my you and Chelsea yesterday. Hey, Chelsea. Chelsea, the blues, the blues. The manager will just touch. She is the blues that won. It's not this when you go to government house here and you see secretary clerk peeling the pussy. Peeling okay, corn. And he's breastfeeding a baby too. And you're walking. Sorry. May I see his excellency? Who are you, please? Tell him, Reverend so and so one thing. He's not around. He gave me an appointment. He told me to meet me for him. He gave you an appointment. Say yes. Where are you coming from? She would ask you all the questions. Afterwards, give you a form to fill. All the questions she's asking you is in the form already. So why are you giving me a form? They fill the form. You say, sit down there and wait. You will say, madam, please, am I not seeing him now? He says, I say you should wait now. He's busy. But you told me he's not around. Now he's busy. She's sleeping there. You see, after a while, you just hear something. Then from nowhere, just here. La da la da la da la da. Hey, for 
Lord, the Lord, the Lord. They have mimicked that song so much. I'll play some in the in church one day. That's why it was a goat. That's not the ladder. They played the song and the goat was following the ladder. Okay? In Western wars, you will not waste time like that. People mean business in business. Once people's shops and offices get open, you are meaning business. That eight hours you are working, you give it complete because they, they don't pay you in the meter of months or weeks. They pay you per second, per hour rather. So, do you know in developed nations, you can choose to work for two hours every day. Say, so my work is two hours. You put in that two hours, productivity. They measure The measure productivity in the meter of impute over time. They don't measure productivity in how many days. They measure productivity in the meter of impute over time. Impute over time. So, what have you been putting here within this space of time? Is what they are checking. Not within this space of months. That's why we have ghost workers everywhere in Africa. They don't go to work, but they receive salary. We are going to rewrite the, the history of Africa. You and me, we will do it. That's why you need to sit down, settle down, let's get this job done. Read books. Use your phones, your internet. When we come to church, let church be flowing with all kinds of information and knowledge and revelation. I am casting a vision for Nigeria, at least Nigeria, then we extend it to Africa. I have a 10-year goal plan for Nigeria. As a church. Maybe I'm going to show you during leadership summit. So if we all embrace ourselves together. Come under this umbrella. And follow this blueprint God has given me for this destiny we are running. All of us we are arrived here. Stop running around. We will reach the end. Okay. Let me take a few questions. Then we we'll pray. I've just done introduction. Maybe there's something you don't understand. I was teaching all this while. If there's a question, you can ask now. If there's none, we close. Then on Wednesday, I would continue. I'll show you the seven the seven wars, battles, waging against the soul. There are seven majorly. And you find all of them in Africa. Some are in the geography. Some are in the people. Some are, they are you know, and all of them are waging against the soul. Some are within the geography, some are within the people, you know. Stand on your feet. Mm. Just begin to talk to God a few seconds, you know. Let's... We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.